Hello and welcome to the Derby Day edition of The Box Seat. I'm Mark Warwood. Nine races at Ascot, including two at Group 3 level. We're expecting a shower or two, unfortunately, on Saturday. 20 degrees is the forecast. I think the track might get to a soft five and the rail it will be in the nine metre position. Race number one at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 12.32. It's the Tap Touch West Speed Platinum Series Heat 2 over 1,200 metres in replay. We look at the last start performance of Zip Zam Zoom. 50 marker site kicks clear two in front from the full quid validation pushing up now on the inside gets the split Javella joins in and so does zip zam zoom validation at the 150 got through inside of the full quid to hit the lead zip zam zoom still runs on it's validation need action along the rails late but validation wins it clever Zip Zam Zoom is the only maiden in this field for the first race on Saturday. But I think the contest sets up really, really nicely for him. Gets William Pike for the first time as well. And I've really liked the two performances this preparation. I think stepping up to 1,200 metres from the 1,100 will certainly be a positive, And I think there will be speed in this race. His late sectionals are very good. Goes on top from number two, Nero Dio, who was wide throughout last start and had even more excuses than that the start before that. Prior to that, had won several races in a row. Nero Dio is certainly up to winning this race. Number eight is B Quick. Uh, comes out of the same form race as Samambo, who is the top weight in this contest. He's waited to turn the tables on Samambo as well, but has drawn gate number 10 for the second race in a row. And then number three, Zephyr Queen. Resumes off a break. She's had eight weeks off. She did beat Samambo back in August, so there's some collateral form lines there, and the bar plates come off the front as well, with Chloe as a party keeping the ride. Top selection in race number one is number 10, Zip Zam Zoom, to beat two Nero Dio, eight B Quick, and three Zephyr Queen. Race number two at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 1.22. It's the Arlec Australia handicap over the staying trip of 2,200 metres in replay. Let's go back to the last start win of Here Comes Lenny. Into the home straight, and I'm a love man with a kick. High energy coming at it. Here comes Lenny down the outside, winding up. Bunker Buster flat to the floorboards, but here comes Lenny at the 150 out near the middle. Surges to the lead, a length and a half to high energy and truly goal. But here comes Lenny, dashes away. It's here comes Lenny, opening up and proving far too good. Second, it might be truly. He does mix his form a little bit, does here comes Lenny, but he absolutely brained the field in that replay race. He carries just half a kilo more here. That's because Lucy Warwick is injured at the moment and Jade McNaught takes over a one and a half kilo claim. It's a similarly graded race from last time out. And if here comes Lenny turns up, I think he'll be winning. Goes on top from number three, Dark Prospect, who was the fastest closer behind Cockney Crew in a recent high rating race. Was beaten three and three quarter lengths that day, but Cockney Crew will go towards the features during the carnival, perhaps even the Perth Cup. Talking of the Perth Cup, Dark Musket has gone around in that race several times. He's number one in this race. He was two lengths behind Dark Prospect in the race a fortnight ago. Certainly a place chance here with Emma Stent keeping the ride. And then number five, uh, high energy. Got a couple of lengths to make up on. Here comes Lenny. I don't think the pace of this race is going to suit. I've got it mapped as being a total walk, but this horse does see out the 2200 metres very, very well. Top selection in race number two is number four. Here comes Lenny to beat three dark prospect, one dark musket, and five high energy. Race number three at Ascot on Saturday will jump at 2.03. It's the muscular dystrophy WA plate over 1,000 metres. In replay, we're going to go back to a Wednesday race, the GTT Ventures Trophy, in which Drink What You Like finished second. See Snipperana and Jaguar Grey Regal poised further back. Drink what you like, shifting out there. Five off the rail, but with a big lead still from War Saint Silken Eyes. Snipperana, Jaguar Grey down the outside. Drink what you like's the leader inside the last 100. Getting tied. Silken Eyes taking ground off it very, very quickly. Coming through. Dived. Oh, gee, they made it close. I really like this assignment for Drink What You Like. Drops from the 1100 to the 1000. I think this horse is a five furlong filly all day every day and um, gets a lugging bit fitted as well and comes out of what was a very high rating race certainly for a Wednesday. There's gonna be plenty of speed on here and I suppose that's the reason why I'm not absolutely declaring her but I think she's the one to beat. Goes on top from number four Pretty Style. She goes back to her own age group after placing second behind Copper Fury in a graduation race last start. That was over the course and distance of a thousand. Gets gate number one as well. Number one high range drops in class quite sharp from the three-year-old 
Gold Classic has blinkers for the first time. Ryan Hills, the regular rider, keeps the ride here for the character. There is Vern Brockman. And then number three, Warfish. Led all the way last week, but he's simply not going to get the same run here. That was over the 1,200. This is over the 1,000. Um, I'm willing to bet around him on Saturday. Top selection in race number three is number eight, Drink What You Like. To beat four pretty style, one high range, and three warfish. Race number four at Ascot on Saturday. We'll jump at 2.47. It's the LWP Property Handicap, over 1,100 metres. In replay, let's look at the latest win of Ocean's 15. On the point of the bend, Ocean's 15, tackled by Stormy Ruler, Dead and Pack have headed it. Two lengths behind them, Wanna Be Good running on from Not To Be Missed. It's Wanna Be Good out near the middle of the track, going up with Denim Pack. Ocean's 15 comes back, Stormy Ruler, Not To Be Missed down the outside, closing. Ocean's 15 regains the lead, Denim Pack, Not To Be Missed. They went to it, tight go Ocean. I've got race number four on Saturday, pegged as a two-horse contest. And I'm going to go with the outsider of the two in the early markets. That's number six. Ocean's 15. He's clearly still learning the ropes, but he's got the potential to be every bit as good as his full brother in Super Maxi. He waited for them in the replay race. Peter Nucky said he wouldn't have blown a candle out. I think in a more genuine contest, I think he's going to improve and he goes on top. I've got a lot of time for number two, Baron Bostock. He goes back to Saturday grade after what was a comprehensive win on a Wednesday, beat Megadon by a length and a quarter and was very, very well supported. He's a Saturday garrapper every day of the week. Then a bit of a gap to number one, King's Authority. He's placed in two of his three starts this season and he gets Harry Gross who wrote two winners on Wednesday. He claims three. And then down the bottom, number 10, Solarise. Benefits from William Pike services uh, because Mitchell Payman, who rode the horse last start, simply can't get down to 55 kilos. Top selection in race number four is number six, Ocean's 15, to be two Baron Bostock, one at King's Authority, and ten at Solarise.